So thank you. I'm going to be talking today actually about something that I think the way kids' minds still work the same, and that is sandbox play or constructive play. Essentially the play where you think about things and you imagine them and you create them. And I'm going to be talking about the digital version of the sandbox and some of the things that are the same and that it's educational, but also some things that are really interesting about the digital version of the sandbox and that is it's infinitely scalable. Um, you can immediately share. Uh, your creations can be consumed by millions of other people. So Roblox is an online building environment. Um, our users play in three ways. They build stuff online. And this is, this is 3D stuff that is built on your laptop or your PC or your tablet. They then share the creations they build. And they build everything from obstacle courses to model cars to buildings to clothing for characters to um, tools that you might use. And then they play with the things that they have created and shared. And what's really interesting about this online sandbox arena that I'm going to talk about is that sharing is a real big engine for usage. Um, I'll give you a parallel example. Right now on YouTube, there's probably over a hundred times as much content created by users as there is with professional video. And YouTube's really created the environment for that sharing. We have the exact same thing going on at Roblox. Every month, our users spend about 40 million hours right now playing on the site, building and sharing. Uh, well over 10 to 15 percent of our users are creating things every month for use by other users. And if you even conservatively take one percent of that 40 million hours and think that's the creation engine that's driving Roblox, that's driving the other things that people play with, it's the equivalent to 2,500 full-time developers. So that's a lot of development power. And so we make a tool, we make an environment for sharing, and then we make the ability to play it both on the PC or on the Macintosh and now on tablets. And we have an army essentially of 2,500 full-time creative people. Um, they're all kids, they're mostly boys between the ages of 8 and 14 who make interesting content for sharing with others. So the new sandbox, um, the digital sandbox it is a category that most of us never really heard of a few years ago. Um, it's growing very rapidly. Our company, the last two years, it has grown numerous times. Um, you're seeing other companies both on the console space, Sony Little Big Planet. We've all heard of Minecraft. If you go look at the iPad store or the iOS store right now, you'll find probably four or five Minecraft clones that have some element of building. Um, so this category is exploding, and just like when Club Penguin was hot, you know, six or seven years ago, and there were a lot of kids' virtual worlds, you're now seeing just a lot of kind of online sandbox construction toy kind of companies. So let's tell you a little about Roblox. Uh, launched six years ago. We're in San Mateo, California. Um, we have about 70 employees. And we, we really founded with the vision, ultimately, that we will know we've achieved our goal when you go to Roblox and you're trying to build a cool construction game and you want a bulldozer. We'll be successful when you find 100 very high quality bulldozers on Roblox that have all been made by our users that can be taken apart, that are fully functional, that have a motor driving the wheels, and that our users can recombine in interesting ways as they see fit. Now we're well on the trajectory to doing that, but we're not there yet, and we have a you know, lot of fun headroom where we can go. Now most of our users are ages 6 through 14. They're mostly boys, as I said. And they find out about us on the playground. So the, you may not have heard of Roblox, but the press is, is starting to notice us primarily for two things. One is our user and engagement stats, which I'll show you in a bit. And the other is the quality of what um, kids in this age range can really do. 
I mean, they can do amazing things. There's been kind of almost an acceleration of how much creativity you can find in the 12 or 14 year old age group. Um, we have users building fully functioning games that are played 15 million times on the site now. And that's, you know, that's really interesting. So we, um, We've grown primarily through word of mouth, and, and in this new kind of online space, unlike maybe what we're used to in the physical space, that word of mouth is super critical. Um, almost all of our users hear about us on the playground, uh, just like with the Angry Birds and other products like this. And because the, this online space is so dependent on word of mouth, it, it really puts a pressure on product quality. You need a product that is engaging enough so friends will talk to friends about it and invite them to come and play. So, uh, I mentioned the YouTube model and the power of user creativity. Just like on YouTube, where there, there's much more content than you could ever find that has been produced professionally, if you start to look at various um, locations and the number of different kind of games that are available. On Facebook right now, I think there's about 18,000 individual game titles. And if you look in the App Store, there's about 120,000 individual playable games. On Roblox right now, there's about 6.9 million individual 3D places that our users have created. They've created them with online 3D tools. <laughs> Um, they created them very similar, kind of in an online way, to the way they might create something with a construction set or an erector set. But because this is online, um, as I said, it's infinitely shareable. It's immediately shareable. And a lot of uh, friends can immediately play with the creation that you've created. So, this... Um, you know, kind of emergent behavior draws some really, really interesting numbers. And the, um, I told you a little about the YouTube number. The, the power of that infinite sharing and that infinite kind of speed of creation starts to drive some amazing statistics. Um, four places on Roblox have been played over 10 million times. Um, 149 different individual creations. These are, once again, obstacle course games. These are, you know, interesting haunted house places. These are uh, airport simulations. These are undersea simulations. 149 different creations made by our kids have been visited a million times. And a thousand of them have been visited a hundred, you know, 123,000. So this infinite sharing drives some really interesting engagement statistics. Now, um, what's interesting is these online sandboxes, um, they both have this, this fun play pattern that it's an imaginative, creative pattern. What's also interesting is that play pattern is driving high engagement, uh, both in our Roblox system as well as in others, to the point now where on Comscore, kids in all categories except unique visitors, Roblox is now the number one destination. And many of us have never heard of it. Uh, Roblox gets more time played, gets more visits per month, uh, gets more page views than you know, who we might assume is there, which is Disney, Nickelodeon, or Cartoon Network. And what's even more interesting is Roblox gets more time used um, in creative construction and creative play than LinkedIn, or than Reddit, or than Match.com. So that's a lot of people doing a lot of interesting engagement. And they're all kids essentially doing sandbox play. Now our, our business model, um, like many of these other online kind of sandbox destinations is, is right now freemium. Um, the vast majority of our users come to the site and play for free, but we have enough volume that the percentage that really gets interested in 
going to the next level or being a professional builder has access to a club membership. Um, but these same engagement stats also, I think, in the future have some interesting opportunities in advertising as well. Um, and, and here's the parallel. American Idol is watched by maybe 13 million people once a week. Uh, Roblox is paid by 3 million people once a week, but they spend probably two or three hours a week playing it. So the aggregate time spent playing on Roblox is, is starting to approach that watching American Idol, which pretends some cool advertising opportunities. Now, so how does this map to toys? And, you know, if we're, if we're starting to see um, the ability to take this imaginative building that we are used to in the physical world to the kind of online world, what, what does that mean relative to the toy space? Now, if you, um, if you look at the toy space relative to the gaming space, there's, there's an interesting thing that you'll see here. And that is, over the last eight to 10 years, one toy category has shown strong growth relative to all others, and that has been the construction toy category. It's kind of the stand up for growth. This is online data. Um, I guess we got this from NPD group. Um, so there's maybe other forms of this data. This is just where my VP of marketing found it. Um, the online gaming space, and the gaming space is an aggregate is a $60 billion space, and that space is, you know, 23 billion in console games, it's 17 billion in PC, 12 billion social, uh, 8 billion mobile. So the gaming space is, is relatively getting quite big, and what we've seen over the last eight or nine years is some of these play categories are starting to share between physical and game play. Um, the vehicle category, you know, for example, a lot of racing games where kids who are interested in vehicles can now both play physically or in a gaming environment. Um, puzzles and board games, traditionally purely physical, we now draw something, words with friend, and online Scrabble and Monopoly. Um, action figures, um, physical, now we start to have a lot of RPG games. But up until recently, the construction toy market or segment, it's a very difficult segment to really implement online. Um, building things in three dimensions is relatively complicated. The, the solutions, as I mentioned earlier, Little Big Planet, Roblox, Minecraft, other types of products, just haven't been there. And so our thesis is, as these products um, mature and get better, there's enormous opportunity to share the online component with the physical component in these toys as well. Uh, we call our product a toy sometimes. And also what's interesting is this is one category that does involve creation as opposed to pure consumption. And so this is an interesting category where our users are creating things that are shared with other people. <laughs> So, the category we're in, digital building, our growth is actually accelerating. So, last year at this time, we were growing about 60% year over year in metrics like hours played or in metrics like monthly visitors. That number is actually getting faster for us. And I think there, you will see kind of a tailwind in this kind of online segment of the construction category. Another interesting thing to think about in the construction category and an online category is once again the the kind of the extent to which kids are already doing that. And I'll, I'll give you an example of this. Here's an interesting comparison of the amount of time spent just in Roblox in creating 3D stuff playing with 3D stuff and sharing 3D stuff. The, the same things we're used to doing with construction toys. This is a worldwide stat from Gawker um, about two to three years ago. So this is someone else's guess at the amount of time that we spend playing with Lego bricks per month. And then this is the time spent in Roblox. Now, as is common with many new kind of things, 
the publicity or the understanding may lag the actual engagement. But when you combine Roblox, Minecraft, other kind of online construction categories, you start to see that this is already a fairly mature category when it comes to the time spent or the engagement. And, um, you know, I, I think there's, there's going to be a lot of headroom for these two categories essentially to coexist as they continue to grow. The, the one thing that you will not see right now out of these, these online things is the things that we traditionally associate with more mature brands in the physical space. So we're not yet seeing online properties being used as platforms for co-branding. You know, you're, you're not seeing yet the TV shows for Little Big Planet or Roblox or Minecraft. Um, you're not seeing the characters starting to migrate around. But I think ultimately as, as these online platforms become places for shared creativity, you'll start to see that, that as well. And you, you might start to see your favorite characters in one of these digital environments. Um, so quick things that we think are really cool about Roblox. Um, we offer the only place where a 12 year old can make a interesting haunted house or a game and immediately have their friends on an iPad or a PC or a Macintosh all play with that same thing at the same time. And a lot of our users are, you know, dream of being game developers or dream of being artists and they can take these creations and show it to their parents and show what they've done. We, um, the other cool thing about our, our platform is we control the universe so we kind of control the moderation and safety. It's, it's kind of a little bit of a walled garden. So, um, I think there's huge um, potential for online construction, and I think it's a cool category because it's, it's kind of like being a tool maker. We make the tools, and then our users build the interesting stuff. So, thank you very much. Appreciate it.